you, Vice President. Um, honorees, and Brian Byrne, I want to thank you for your wonderful remarks. And as we agreed, you don't have to pay me the money you owe me. <laughs> uh, the, uh, I'm standing next to this piece of Waterford crystal, and it reminds me, Gene, of when you were honored as the Irish American of the Year by Irish America magazine years ago. And Waterford had built this beautiful, special Waterford sculpture, and it was on a kind of an unsteady stage. And just before I was going to give it to her, it fell. <laughs> and I mean, broke. <laughs> and I had it swept up and put it in a sack, and I gave it to Jean and said, you are about to receive more pieces of Waterford crystal <laughs> than any person in history. The, uh, I have notes because if I get anything wrong, Gene will raise hell with me. So, um, Gene, you represent the best of Irish America from a family that selfishly devoted itself to extraordinary work on behalf of the poor and the unfortunate and the downtrodden. Just think a minute. Um, how would this country look without this family? Would African Americans have full, complete civil rights? I don't know. Would the disabled and the mentally challenged be able to walk out of their houses and have the joy of victory the joy of success, the joy of participation that came from Special Olympics here and around the world. And would there be peace in Ireland? Now let's think for a minute about that last statement. As ambassador to Ireland, Jean played an absolutely critical role in creating the space with the process. Arguably, the peace process could not have succeeded without her strong and full participation and her key role of bringing American know-how and knowledge to the very heart of the process. Think of this. Without Jean, there would have been no President Bill Clinton involved in the process. As ambassador to Ireland, she played the it's a crucial role in assuring President Clinton that the prospect of peace was real and that, that America had much to gain by being involved. And she said that she and her brother Teddy would be at his side giving full support along the way. And boy, was she criticized. Her own State Department totally disagreed with her, as did many others in the senior level of government, believing that the U.S. Was, should stay out of it, stay out of that conflict. But she persisted, and she succeeded. And uh, think about it. What would Ireland be today without that process? And what greater tribute can we give to her and her family on the 50th anniversary of her brother's famous visit to Ireland of that simple truth. Thank you, Jean. Thank you for all that you stand for. And thank you for millions of Irish Americans who saw the dream of peace come to Ireland. You belong in the centerpiece of that Hall of Fame in Drumbody, a few miles from where your ancestors came from in Wexford. Jean is not going to speak because she can't wait to hear from Vice President Biden. <laughs>
And, and uh, I noticed that the previous speaker, in, in, in acknowledging you, made the mistake of saying, Mr. President, that was just an anticipation. <laughs> So, Gene, stand up and let us acknowledge you, please. Wow, what the hell do you follow that? Oh, she wants to. I don't want to make a speech. I just want to say one word. There were a lot of people involved in this. So I want you to recognize that as well. Uh, and so some of them are here on, at these tables, and I can't go through them all. But it was certainly a big effort of uh, many of them Americans who helped immeasurably. So my hat goes off to them. This is a shared prize. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jean, there's an old Irish expression, the ekimi de la we'll never see your likes again. That is true. Thank you. Are you either, Keogh?